Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming in a new Diablo 4 video. Today I want to talk about legendaries, since after all we're going to want a ton of them, specific ones at that, types of ones, build defining powerhouse pieces that you may even find at random. With that comes a lot of legendaries you might not be sure about, especially when leveling. Should you dismantle that legendary? Should you save it and put it in the stash? Should you extract its power? Is it even a good legendary? in the first place. There is a lot of questions, unfortunately, some solid answers to help you know what's good while leveling up. So with this quick video, you should hopefully know everything you need to. So let's just get started. Let's take a look at some legendaries that I'm wearing now and work out if they're good or bad. For example, this item is legendary, so standard legendary. This one's a sacred legendary. And then we have a unique legendary. So there's different types, as you can see. To know if one's good, we need to see how it's rolled. And as you can see with this legendary, consuming a corpse has a 26% chance to spawn a blood orb. But between that, you can see that it says 20 to 30%. This is showing me what that roll could have been. I rolled 26, but I could have rolled 20, or I could have even rolled the optimal one at 30%. So there's variance in the legendary effect, how powerful it actually will be. To get those limiters to actually show on your UI though, you need to do something specific. By opening the menu and going to options and then going to gameplay, then as you can see, advanced tooltip compare and information, these things are not on by default and absolutely should be. Once they're on, you're going to start seeing these numbers. So even if you don't know if that specific legendary effect is good for you or a potential build you use, you can know whether it's rolled high or low. Anything that rolls high, you should at least save. Meanwhile, if something rolls terribly, like literally the bottom, unless it's a very unique effect that is very good, you can fairly securely dismantle that one for its materials. What about legendaries that aren't RNG? Ones that you can actually make like the ones I did here with this imprinted legendary effect. Imprinted legendaries come from the Codex of Power where you can go ahead and get specific effects and imprint them on. Take the aspect of Torment here. Critical strikes with bonus skills increase your essence regen by 20%. That can go up to say 40%, but it's specifically 20% as the lowest roll. That is because when you're taking something from the Codex of Power, which are infinite imprints, they roll the lowest they literally can. It's not so bad because say splintering aspect here, this is absolutely vital to a bone spear build. So having even the lowest rolled version of that compared to not having it is worth it and amazing to have. But ideally, we would get the splintering aspect on a legendary drop, extract that off of whatever it was on and put it onto our ideal weapon, amulet, gloves, whatever. Codexes come from these specific dungeons. For example, I could get Blood Howl for the Druids simply by completing this dungeon at any point. The same again for this one. This one actually relevant to me for Bloodlands. But again, these are the lowest rolls because they're codex aspects. To imprint or extract legendaries though, you're gonna need to come here to the Occultist. That's this symbol in town, but unfortunately they only show up in the proper sort of cities. Either way, by speaking to the Occultist, we can choose from different options. We can imprint, so create a new legendary, extract to take off a legendary. So let's take my weapon and have a look so we would get this which is unfortunately a low roller as it is four out of four to eight so let's give an example here let's click the codex of power and it'll open this up show class only let's go for an offensive one so why don't we do that bone spear we're talking about so this can only go on certain pieces fortunately all of the ones i brought it can go on so let's put that in there so it would go in here the gloves in this case give me two ranks of bone spear which is exactly what i want the problem is it costs seventy-two thousand to imprint so i can't just be doing this all the time without consequences Further, it requires these resources, the Veil Crystals, which you get from extracting even just the basic rares, then things like Coiling Wards, which come from salvaging legendaries specifically. Let's try a different option. Let's go to a resource one, for example, and pick that one. This can only go on my ring. It will not go on an amulet. So depending on the type of aspect, it will go on specific parts of your gear. So it will only go on rings and jewelry here. And as you can see, in this case, it's a lot cheaper, but it requires a different resource. Again, something that comes from dismantling legendaries. Further, depending on what piece you actually imprint on will increase the power of your offensive aspects like this one. For example, if I'm to imprint it on a pair of gloves, it's just going to be standard. But instead of putting it on the gloves, let's put it on an amulet, which instead of being 50% is now 88%. That's a 50% increase. If you were to put it on a weapon, it'd be even better. Or even a two-hand weapon, it'd be even higher. The problem with imprinting on weapons is that you replace these constantly. There's something you're going to find the most out of everything. And if it's got an item power of even 10 levels higher than whatever you're using, its DPS will be relevantly higher. It's a bad idea to have a legendary weapon, especially an imprinted weapon, because you're going to replace that constantly. Wasting your money, wasting the resources 
it's a bad idea. So while leveling, I recommend imprinting on your amulet ideally, or it'll just be on the other pieces it allows, like gloves, like the jewelry, which won't get an increase. When it comes to dismantling a legendary then, you just want to be sure that it's not going to be relevant to you. If it's a skill that just has absolutely no relevance and you know that, then fair enough. But if it's a terrible roll, that's usually enough to justify getting rid of it. I have a max roll version of this legendary, so a 20% is not that valuable to me, and so I can get rid of it and get those very important resources required for imprinting and upgrading legendaries, which we're absolutely going to need. So knowing you've low rolled something could be the justification to dismantle it to get the resources we're all going to need anyway. Another big question is, should I be grinding for legendaries while leveling? Because of course you're going to get powerful skills, maybe you'll be leveling faster. The truth is, you're going to enter world tier 3, nightmare mode, and at that point you're going to have access to a new tier of equipment called sacred equipment. Sacred equipment has much better stats, much better skill levels, and are often way higher in power level. When we enter nightmare mode, our goal should be to equip all sacred gear and ideally imprint or get good legendary effects on sacred gear. So by hardcore grinding normal legendaries while, you know, there's going to be an upper tier in the mid game, it's just not really worth it. We can rely on the codex aspects for the vital components of a build while leveling. And that'll be between two or maybe three imprints on your armor. That'd probably be your amulets and probably your rings. From there, anything we get that drops is cool, but we don't need to pull our hair out over it. Once we reach nightmare mode, we'll be working on sacred legendaries at that point. We should talk now about murmuring obols, as you can see. I'm quite near my cap of 550, and so I should really spend some soon. This vendor, the purveyor of curiosities, you can find them in cities and towns, and these are your vendors for the obols. As you can see, we have different choices for different costs, including keys that allow us to open silent chests in the open world. They're worth having because, yeah, you might find one and get some good gear out of them. I try to have at least one on me at all times. Other than that, what should I do with these obols, and when should I spend them? Well, while you're leveling, I don't recommend you spend them. The only reason to spend them is because you're reaching near the cap and you can't carry any more, which should be around 500 when you begin. The reason that we hold on to the obols is that once we reach nightmare mode, or even tier 4 later on, we can dump obols into this RNG system, where we can spend some obols and spawn something. I'll give it a try now by spawning a couple focuses. I got a blue and a grey. If I do this enough, I'll get a legendary, and there's a chance it'll be a sacred legendary at that, because I'm in nightmare mode at this point. So saving your resources for the tier 3 turning point or the tier 4 later on and then dumping them to try to get sacred gear that's what we would ideally do with these resources though you won't be finding them all the time because they are of course tied to world events and we'll be mostly ignoring those when leveling oh but i just did it on my fourth go i just pulled a legendary as you can see it is not a sacred though so its eye level is relatively low compared to my sacred one. Let's see if it's good. Well, it deals 5%. Oh no, it got 5% out of a possible 5 to 10%. So it has rolled the minimal. Unless I really want this effect, this is a pretty safe dismantle. We've mentioned sacred versions of legendaries quite a lot. As I've said, in nightmare mode tier three, that's when they're gonna start dropping sacred equipment. Sacred equipment has much higher eye level, much better skill potential. Overall, they're way better. You can get a rare sacred item and then imprint on it to make a very powerful legendary. Or you can get much more lucky and just simply have a sacred legendary drop like this one. There is many ways to farm sacred gear and gear in general when in nightmare mode. Some good examples of that will be working on your tree of whisperers, which will unlock during the story towards the end of act four. And by completing grim favors, you will get rewards as they're shown like this on the map all over the place in different regions with different objectives at different values. Dungeons being worth the most at five or world bosses. Once you fill that up, you can go back to the tree and pick a reward. From this, you get a bunch of gear you can specifically pick, and you might even get lucky and guarantee get a legendary drop, or get lucky when you open the package and get legendaries anyway. Of course, world bosses are a great option. These guarantee drop legendaries, even multiple, and even Satchit's full of legendaries as well. And then of course, normal methods like dungeons and otherwise. In the mid game, you'll be doing so much general content and getting legendaries pretty consistently at that, or sacred items that you can imprint on to make legendary. But while you're leveling, it's not something you really need to worry about. But there you have it. That is my overview of legendaries while leveling, the different systems and reasoning as to what makes a good legendary and how you can tell. I hope this helps you feel a bit more comfortable in which things to save, which things to extract, when to imprint and what to imprint, and all that good stuff. If you have any further information about legendaries and otherwise that might help someone, you can drop it in the comments. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.